Greetings from the Redeemed Christian Church of God in Oklahoma City. This is the Open Heavens for August 21st, 2019. Open Heavens is a daily devotional written by the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E.A. Adeboe. I pray that as we go into the study of His Word today, may all, we all be richly blessed and transformed by His Word in Jesus' name. Amen. The title for today, August 21st, is Strategically Located. Strategically Located. And our daddy is teaching us, even using Joseph, as a case study. The memory verse is Genesis 50 verse 20 which says, But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good, to bring to pass, as it is this day, to save much people alive. And the Bible reading is Genesis 37, verse 13 to 28. Genesis 37, verse 13 to 28 and we're going to be reading some key verses there starting from verse 13 and Israel said to Joseph are not your brothers feeding the flock in Sheshem come I will send you to them so he said to him yeah I am and even in verse 18 it says now when they saw him afar off even before he came near them, they conspired against him to kill him. Then they said to one another, Look, this dreamer is coming. Come therefore, let us now kill him and cast him into some pit. And we shall say some wild beast has devoured him. We shall see what will become of his dreams. But Reuben heard it and it delivered him out of their hands and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit which is in the wilderness, and do not lay a hand on him, that he might deliver him out of their hands and bring him back to his father. So it came to pass, when Joseph had come to his brothers, that they stripped Joseph of his tunic, the tunic of many colors that was on him. And then they took him and cast him into a pit. That the, and the pit was empty, there was no water in it. And they sat down to eat a meal. Then they lifted their eyes and looked. And there was a company of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels, bearing spices, balm, and myrrh on their way to carry them down to Egypt. So Judah said to his brothers, What profit is there if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come! And let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh, and his brothers listened. Then the Midianite traders passed by, so the brothers pulled Joseph up, and lifted him out of the pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for twenty shekels of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. May God bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. And as we can see from the reading of those Bible verses we read, it was talking about Joseph. The intention was for him to be killed by his brothers. But God intervened and they decided to sell him to slave merchants who led him to Egypt. And there he became a slave also served in Potiphar's house. Later he was jailed for a crime he did not commit. And after a period of about 15 years, God visited Joseph with his mercy and brought him out of prison. And he became second in command to Pharaoh. That is, the initial story we read was about how they conspired to kill him and eventually sold him into slavery. And you know one of the things we can learn, and that is teaching us here, is that 
for Joseph to become second in command to Pharaoh, it looked impossible. Because the father was a foreigner, he was a slave, and he was an ex-convict. But with God, nothing is impossible. He made it possible. And one of the things we can learn, which our dad is teaching us here concerning strategic location and the story of Joseph, is that throughout that experience of Joseph, when he was, when they wanted to kill him, when they wanted to, when they sold him to slavery, when he was in jail, when he was going through all of that, Joseph was never bitter or angry or vengeful towards his brothers. That's why what they did to him. Why? Because he believed that God's purpose was being fulfilled in everything he faced. Even though it was not palatable, even though it was not convenient, it was not a comfortable situation, he believed that God's purpose was being fulfilled throughout every difficulty he was facing. And even if you can see that it was even buttressed in Genesis 45, if we read to verse 5 to 8, the key sentence there I want us to zero in what was when it said, So it was not you that sent me either, but God. He was telling them. So that's to show you that it was being strategically located by God Almighty. So he did not view what happened to him entirely as an act of hatred. No, he did not. But rather, it was a way by which God was strategically positioning him for the fulfillment of his great purpose. That is how Joseph saw it. He was being strategically located and positioned by the God Almighty. Which means that God had a saving purpose even in all those cruel events in his life. And that's the kind of mindset that we also should have. No matter the cruel events we are facing, no matter the um, distress, stress, distress situations we are facing, let's know that God has a saving purpose for such events in our life. And even the book of Romans 8.28 still attests to that fact when it says that we know all things, whether good, whether bad, whether cruel, whether evil, all things, they work together for the good of them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. And that is praying a prayer for us here too. That I therefore pray that God will strategically position you and that all things will begin to work together for your good and the overall blessing of your entire family in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So let's live with that mindset that no matter what we face, God is strategically positioning us and locating us according to his divine purpose, just like Joseph did. The prayer point is, Father, please let every evil plan of the enemy work together for my good in Jesus' name. Father, we pray, Lord Jesus, O oh God, Lord God Almighty, as you did for Joseph, Father, we pray, O oh God, that let every evil plan of the enemy work together for our good in the mighty name of Jesus, O oh God. Whatever their plans, whatever their agendas, Father, we pray that, Lord God Almighty, every evil plan of the enemy against us, O oh God, Father, we work together for our good, for in Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Thank you so much for watching, and we hope to see you tomorrow by God's grace.